The reason we're making this DVD is really to support nurses, physicians and other members of the transplant team to support patients who have this condition. Recognising that it's not, while it is a physical condition, it is also a condition that affects people mentally, socially and spiritually. One of the things that is very exciting about this DVD is that it is made by nurses and doctors and members of the transplant team for nurses and doctors and members of the transplant team. Once seen as an experimental procedure, stem cell transplantation now offers real hope to people with malignant and non-malignant diseases. In Europe alone, we perform more than 20,000 autologous and allogeneic transplants every year. And the focus now is on developing transplant protocols that would lead to long-term disease-free survival with fewer side effects. One of those side effects is graft versus host disease. So graft versus host disease is a clinical condition that affects many patients that receive a stem cell transplantation. It is a disease that occurs when the graft actually recognizes the host, in this case the patient, as a foreign and practically attack it, reject it. And I think you'll find that a lot of patients that have had transplants, I think a lot of us have felt that you have the transplant and from that point you're going to get better. You don't realise there are all these other hundreds of complications that you might suffer from. Um, I think you see the transplant as the beginning of being well again, not the beginning of more complications, which is what it's turned out to be for me. Nobody really knows what it's like until it actually happens to them. I think while graft versus host disease is a real, ch real challenge, we also know that there are benefits to graft versus host disease. And the benefits are that the cells that they attack the recipient in graft versus host disease also have the ability to attack any residual malignant disease such as leukemia that may still be in the recipient's body. I do, I do feel there's no end to it, although I know that I must have a certain amount of graft versus host to keep my myeloma at bay, and especially with myeloma because in, with me it tends to take off and go out of control very quickly, so I know I have to have some of it. But I think I'm beginning to realise that I'm probably lumbered with graft versus host, at least for the foreseeable future. The conditioning therapy for malignant diseases um, has several purposes. Number one is to try and eradicate the actual disease, which is quite commonly leukemia or lymphoma. Um, and the other main purpose of it is to immune suppress the patient so that when they receive the incoming bone marrow cells or peripheral blood stem cells from the donor, they can accept those in conjunction with um, receiving some immunosuppressive therapy. But recently there has been um, a, a, a move, if you like, to reducing the intensity of a patient's conditioning so that instead of relying on the drugs or radiotherapy entirely to eradicate disease, we're trying to treat the patients, if you like to term it, more lightly with the chemo radiotherapy um, and allow the incoming stem cells and the lymphocytes which are in them to have a graft versus tumour effect. Uh, but unfortunately this is very closely linked with graft versus host disease so it's a matter of um, establishing a balance um, between the amount of graft versus host disease that you get in your patient which is mediated by these incoming lymphocytes um, and an anti-tumour effect. So through careful manipulation the GVHD immune response can be used to remove any residual malignant disease in a process better known as the graft versus tumour effect. I mean, that's always at the back of your mind that uh, GVHD includes graft versus leukaemia effect uh, and you hope it's having a go at your leukaemia cells. So it kind of helps a bit when your mouth's really getting you down or, or your eyes, you can get dry eyes as well. Um, you know, you think, well, actually, you know, I can put up with some of this because it's part of the treatment, if you like, and it's doing me good. I think one of the criticisms of hemato-oncology is that perhaps we're guilty of focusing on the physical aspects of the disease and trying to support the person through that part of the disease. And we may not always um, pay enough attention to the psychological impact that the transplant and this graft versus host disease can have on them. T cells, special white blood cells that recognize foreign matter in the body, have a significant role to play in GVHD, 
T-cells orchestrate attacks on bacteria, viruses and other substances foreign to the body. They can also distinguish self from non-self human cells, cells that belong to one person's body and those that do not. It's this process that brings about GVHD and the graft versus tumour effect. Whilst removing T-cells has been utilised in the past, this may increase the risk of the original disease relapsing. Some people develop a serious degree of GVHD and others hardly acquire it at all. So what are the factors that influence a patient in developing the disease? There are both donor and recipient factors. The main um, factor is um, human leukocyte antigen or HLA disparity or sameness between the donor and the recipient. So um, the uh, donor has to be if ideally fully ma HLA matched at about 10 different loci uh, on this human leukocyte antigen system, um, matched as closely as possible to the recipient who's going to receive the bone marrow or stem cells from them. Uh, and any um, difference in that uh, HLA typing is liable to promote uh, graft versus host disease in the recipient. So the more similar the donor is to the recipient, the less likely we are to get graft versus host disease. Um, and the ultimate in that would be if a donor was a, an identical twin. Immune suppression is obviously vital. If, um, if um, a patient did not have immune suppressing drugs given to them when they were receiving the incoming bone marrow, they would, almost, they would probably 100% certainly develop graft versus host disease. Other factors may include the age of the recipient and the donor, any previous exposure to viruses and female donors who may have developed antibodies during pregnancy. It's also been recognised that those who have received stem cells taken from the umbilical cord are less likely to develop GVHD. Because of the advances in our understanding of the disease and treatments, less intensive conditioning therapy may be used on some patients. Previously, the aim was to completely destroy the recipient's immune system, removing any malignant disease and enabling the incoming donor cells to develop. With less intensive conditioning therapy, the donor cells gradually replace any remaining recipient cells, removing any residual disease. We categorize GVHD as either acute or chronic, depending on how soon after transplant they develop although sometimes this distinction is not so straightforward. We still refer to acute graft-versus-host disease as the graft-versus-host disease that appears in the recipient within 100 days of transplant. However, because of development and transplantations, for example, the conditioning treatment and the conditioning protocols that we use, we are now seeing um, evidence of acute graft-versus-host disease beyond 100 days. So it's difficult to distinguish when acute graft-versus-host disease ends and perhaps chronic graft-versus-host disease begins. Acute GVHD has three phases. Phase one, the time prior to actual donor infusion, when the patient is becoming immunocompromised by the transplant conditioning therapy. Phase two occurs after the stem cell infusion. At this time, the donor cells are activated and begin to proliferate. Phase 3 in the third or inflammatory phase, other mediators of GVHD are now known to include natural killer cells and monocytes responding to foreign pathogens such as viral and bacterial infections which impact specifically on the skin, gut and liver because they hold a plentiful supply of antigen presenting cells which the donor cells recognise as foreign activating an immune response. The major symptom of acute GVHD is a skin rash, uh, classically affecting uh, the neck, around the face or the hands and the feet, but can be generalised over the whole body. This is normally just a macular papular irritating itchy rash, but it can be uh, widespread leading to widespread redding of the skin, erythroderma, and indeed in severe cases you get a blistering of the skin as well, hands and feet, and generalised blistering. So that's the commonest manifestation, but then you may get other manifestations particularly affecting the liver and the bowel. In the liver, um, as a nurse, um, I would be, on a daily basis, I would be monitoring um, the, the, the patient's uh, liver results. And in cases where this graft versus host disease may be suspected, I, I, I might find that the, the liver enzymes are raised. One of the problems is that graft versus host disease is only one complication among many that we as a transplant team are facing. So as a nurse, I need to ask myself, could there be anything else that's causing these liver abnormalities?
for example, maybe an infection, maybe a drug toxicity, or another condition called phenoclusive disease. Uh, in the GI tract or the gastrointestinal tract, um, as a nurse, I would often see um, a patient maybe complaining of abdominal pain, um, having diarrhea, and um, the diarrhea that's associated with Graffer's disease tends to be very watery, um, green in colour. Some people talk about it looking like, a, a, like green jelly. Um, and also uh, the patient can have nausea and